And go. As soon as I spawn in, I begin gathering the essentials for my journey. This early on, I didn't know what to expect from the project. Sure, Minecraft generates some cool landmarks here and there, but wouldn't walking for 10 whole hours get pretty boring? Whew, boy was I wrong. Before you lies a tale of triumph, of bewilderment, and of sorrow. This is Video Game World Tours Extended Stays. I'm walking westward, so my vision is always focused on the direction where the sun or moon sets. I wasn't planning on perfectly sticking to zero on the z-axis, that seemed like more trouble than it was worth. So while I'm going mostly west, I'll drift north and south occasionally. One of the first things I do is try and come up with a solid prediction for how many blocks I'll walk. I wanted to have a guess pretty early on, and I wasn't going to check the F3 screen for my coordinates until time is up. After some waffling about, I came up with one. 14 million blocks. I'm not going to comment on how close that was, but think to your own experience playing Minecraft over the years. How many blocks west do you think I'll walk over 10 hours? Leave a comment, I'm curious how close some people will get. And no cheating, I'll know if you did. I come across a village around the 9 minute mark and gather a nice stack of hay bales. I know I can convert them to bread pretty easily, so I grab most of the hay I see early on. Nighttime rolls around, and I spend it gathering more materials in the village. I also let the golem defend me a bit. You'll definitely come to notice this throughout the playthrough, but I'm very skittish when it comes to fighting in Minecraft. I'm skittish in normal worlds. I'm especially on edge in a playthrough like this, where dying can set me back a fair chunk of blocks. While waiting for the sun to rise, I take some time to appreciate the village itself. After all, this is a video game world tour. Spin-off series or not, we gotta soak in the environment. A lot of the villages I see in Minecraft are often broken up by the terrain generation. They'll be scaling down the sides of hills or even mountains. You can see some of that here. But over here, it's completely flat. I guess it's not too weird or anything. I'm just not used to seeing perfectly flat terrain, especially inside a village. I feel like villages are predisposed to spawn along cliff sides and have huge vertical height differences. This is one of the rare, mostly normal ones. During my nighttime stay, I deliberate over whether I should tame a cat. On one hand, I like the idea of having some companionship throughout my travels. On the other, I didn't want to be slowed down by them. I wanted this to be solely about how far I could possibly walk in 10 hours. I can only achieve that as a lone wolf. I caved in and tamed the little guy. I named him Barkley. Daytime comes. Barkley and I leave the village. While I'm walking, I'll answer one of the many questions I'm sure you have. Pretzel, why are you doing this? I want to become uncomfortably familiar with this game. In my previous video like this, I spent 10 hours hunger down in one Fallout 3 town. I got to see all that the town had to offer by the time 10 hours had passed. Just as we became familiar with the handcrafted town of Megaton in Fallout 3, I want to become familiar with the terrain of Minecraft. Because that's Minecraft's secret sauce. The developers didn't spend a bunch of time handcrafting one location. They crafted a system that would generate landscapes for you on the fly. I wanted to immerse myself and see all that Minecraft would create. So that's what we're doing here. We're just walking and observing. I find this valley pretty early on, and this is what I mean. If I'm zoning out looking for caves or whatever, I may glaze over this whole scene. But when I take a step back and actually look at everything, it's beautiful. The mountains surrounding this pool of water at the bottom, it's calling you to build in or around it. But that's not why we're here. We're here to observe and move on. Ten minutes later, I further stray from my lone wanderer origins and tame another pet. And in the honor of the lone wanderer from the previous extended stay, I name this wolf Dogmeat. We set off into the rainy night. Day rolls around yet again, and I find this cute little bunny. I get close to him and he... Well, I'll just say this won't be the last harrowing loss of the episode. In this icy ocean biome, I come across a boat lodged in some ice above sea level. I don't think I've seen anything like this before, and I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to have gotten up there. Oh, and get a look at this. Random floating bits of dirt. This is one of my favorite quirks of terrain generation. I love seeing dirt blocks totally disconnected from the ground. Towards the end of Hour Zero, I become filled with an unusual amount of courage. 
I am going to fight a zombie for once. Just as I heroically swing my sword to defeat this evil foe, Dogmeat bravely jumps in front of my sword to... Yeah, I don't know why he did that. Animals teleporting when they get too far away is nice and all, but sometimes it's annoying. Barkley and I watch the sunrise as we enter the first hour. In fact, I give him a new friend by taming another cat. I name him Morgana after the talking van from School Simulator 5. Sometime later, I come to a terrible realization. After boating across a chunk of water and climbing onto a nearby island, I noticed my animals weren't with me. Animals can't teleport across big bodies of water. They need to stand on solid ground to teleport to you. And if you go too far away, they unload and can't teleport. That's what I was worried about. I couldn't just go straight across a large body of water. I had to constantly dock on land partway through to give my animals places to teleport. I knew that taming all these animals would get in the way of my goal. But you know what? Friends don't leave friends behind. We're going back to get them. I boat all the way back to where I set off from, and sure enough, Morgana and Dogmeat are waiting for me. But wait, where's Barkley? I didn't notice he was gone before I set off, so how far back could he be? Or is he even a- no, no, I can't bring myself to think about it. Friends don't leave friends behind. We're backtracking to find Barkley. He has to be alive, he just has to be. Not 20 seconds after I start walking back, Barkley teleports in front of me. No idea how we got separated, but whatever. I realize I haven't healed them at all since I picked them up, so I feed them both fish. Unfortunately, forgetting that doing that forces them to... Yeah, we had a third cat. I'm bad at names. It took me a while to come up with one for this cat. I gave up and ended up naming her Whiskers. The Pretzel Troop is five creatures strong, and we will let nothing get in the way of our journey westward. I come across the first, and interestingly enough, only Woodland Mansion in this playthrough. A Totem of Undying would have been nice, but I didn't trust myself not to die immediately with my golden helmet and stone tools. Ten minutes later, I find a pack of wolves, and I can't help myself. I have three cats and one wolf. Dogmeat needs a friend too. After some bone feeding, I name this one Shadow. Which leads to a problem. Which one is which? I beeline it over to some nearby flowers and make some dye to give them unique color colors. Roll call. Shadow and Morgana are pink, Dogmeat and Whiskers are orange, and Berkeley is a different color from the other cats, so I leave him with the base red. The next 20 plus minutes are rough. A lot of boating, and a lot of going to nearby shores to teleport animals. A thunderstorm arrives. I make my journey across the water with the rain pitter-pattering on my golden helmet. I land on an intermediary island in the middle of a larger ocean, when suddenly... Once there's ocean, it's just... Jesus! Oh my god! 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 I got away unscathed, but it was enough to wake me out of my slump. And only a couple minutes later, as I'm building a teleport platform for my furry friends... Jesus! What in the hell? There's some bad mojo going on in this world. I think it's telling me I'm not welcome here. I ignore the warnings and move on. I find a ruined portal and try to open the chest, but I can't. Apparently if a cat is sitting down on top of a chest, you can't open it. A bit annoying when they get up and sit there themselves, though I guess that's accurate to cats in real life. Just as the next hour begins, I come across a weird rock structure. It's reminiscent of the floating dirt blocks we saw earlier. I love when the game messes up and creates some weird nonsense. Could you imagine seeing something like this in real life? A giant boulder with dirt on top, supported only at the bottom by this? It's fun to think about stuff like that sometimes. Got some more walking. Walking, we're walking. Ugh, stop doing that! Oh, I have to bring up the game's music. I know Minecraft's soundtrack has been talked about to death by people way more qualified than me, but I feel like I'd be doing my experience with the game a disservice if I didn't at least bring it up. If you watch my full 10 hour playthrough, link in the cards and description, you'll notice that there's big chunks of time where there's absolutely no music. Just me talking, my footsteps, and the animals barking and meowing incessantly. Which makes it all the more meaningful when one of the game's beautiful tracks slowly fades in. I turned off the HUD here to soak in the scenery for a moment, and almost as if the game knew when to strike to be the most impactful, the music kicked in. Such a great moment. Later that night, I spend a couple minutes hanging out on the ice, cooking some food. 
and I do it again. I breed another pet. A third dog. It takes me a few minutes to give him a name, but I go with Monroe. I leave him with a default red collar. Three dogs and three cats. I was content with that setup. In the morning, I reach an ocean that stretches out as far as I can see. This has been my worst nightmare, in that I'm forced to follow the shorelines northwest or southwest the best I can. I obviously want to see how far west I can get, and taking diagonals isn't going to get me as far. But I love my friends, so we take the slower path. A couple minutes later, I discover this huge island. This looks like something out of an amplified world. The new world generation with 1.18 really puts in work sometimes. On that island is a ruined portal. What I want to point out is the underside of it. I've never seen the bottom of a ruined portal landmark before. It looks like a chunk of land was lifted out of the nether and placed here. Which you obviously get from the netherrack and magma blocks, but I never noticed the detailing on the bottom. Neat. I am pulled towards the top of the island. I feel my ancestors calling to me, telling me to just jump. After many agonizing minutes of ocean travel, I finally reach land and eventually discover some badlands. This is my favorite biome. I love the vibes here. I also like all the free terracotta, but that's besides the point. This is a beautiful place. And this Badlands area in particular is wild. Look at all this. I've never seen a Badlands like this, with the super tall peaks and steep slopes leading into a valley below. I usually build in caves when I play Minecraft, but I feel so inspired to build something here. What that something is, I don't know, but I want to build something. I climb the slope I'm standing on, and an even bigger mountain is brought into view. The scale is just mind-blowing here. That would be so annoying to climb but it looks cool from a distance. After leaving the Badlands and passing through some desert, I discover this beautiful coral reef. Before I can start to appreciate it though, I spot something on the surface of the water. An invisible spider! For those who don't know, when playing on hard difficulty, spiders have a small chance to spawn with a status effect. And of the status effects the game chooses from, invisibility is chosen 20% of the time. But I'm playing this world on normal difficulty. Actually, I do want to get... I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh my gosh. It was just, it's just the coral poking out from underneath the water. Gosh dang it. I swear that's a thing though. I swear that's a thing. See, <laughs> seeing spiders invisible. I swear I've seen that before. They are a thing past me. Don't gaslight yourself. I go underwater to get a better look at the coral reef. I love all the colors here. The game has trended towards being less saturated over the years, but I like that they made these textures really pop. It's almost tempting to build an underwater base in a place like this, but that sounds like a nightmare, so I'd probably never do that. What is that sound? Did you hear that sound? That was crazy. I swear, this game has some of the spookiest ambient sounds. Everyone knows the cave sounds, but what about the giant underwater whale sounds? Those are scary too. Hour three passes while I make my way through the coral reef. Nearby, I discover my first, and also only, spider jockey. It's not my first rare mob sighting, as I also saw a chicken jockey on my first night, but I'm definitely keeping an eye out for other elusive creatures. It's funny to see how the skeleton is scared of my dogs, so he won't shoot me, but the spider still tries to attack me. Poor fella can't run away while the spider chases me down. This cave is really cool. It looks like a meteor was flying in real low and pierced through the slope. I enter the first jungle of the series. I hate jungles. There's so many trees of varying heights and the terrain is all over the place. It's just awful to traverse. Not to mention, creepers are pretty well camouflaged in this environment, so that's cool. I sit and watch the sunset as day turns to night. While I'm crossing a river, I hear the sound of rain from beneath the water's surface. It reminds me of a nice, relaxing summer's day, with the rain gently bouncing off the roof. See, look at this. I feel like when it when it's nighttime and when it rains, I feel like it lasts forever, compared to like, oh, I love it when it's just daytime and it's sun shining. That lasts like five seconds, but when it's raining and it's nighttime and it's icky, it lasts like 20 minutes. Nighttime is only eight minutes or so, while rain can last anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. A full Minecraft day. 
even knowing those numbers now, it still feels like rain and nighttime last forever. These poor animals. They don't get to walk very far before getting teleported. That's their that's been their whole journey. I haven't paid any attention to them. And they I walk too fast and they get left behind and they jump. And then they stand still for a second, and then they jump. Almost three and a half hours into my journey, I start to feel bad for my animals. I get to walk around at my own pace, but my pets are forced to teleport within reach of me every couple dozen blocks. They don't get to enjoy the walk like I do, but they don't seem to mind. Nighttime comes, and we pass through another jungle. Like I said, I hate these. I always feel like I'm about to fall in a perfect two block deep hole with a creeper and be unable to escape. I'm on edge in this biome. I do get to see a forest fire though, that's cool. Got a good bit more walk in before anything interesting happens. <laughs> oh wow, this is huge. Look at this. Look at how far that stretches out. I don't think I've ever seen a coral reef this big. Definitely not in this world, at least. After attempting to cross a large ocean, I hear another weird sound. There's the ocean monument. I want to... What in the hell was that sound? Here it is again. There's the ocean monument. I want to... No idea what that is. If I were making a game, I would code it so that completely random sounds like and would have a one in one million chance to play every now and then just to gaslight players into thinking that they're hearing things. I swear that's what Minecraft does to me sometimes. As we close in on hour four, I reach another Badlands. Once again, I'm blown away by the generation here. I don't know what it is about mountains surrounding a body of water that impress me, but it does, okay? Phantom, 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 Phantom. I haven't brought this up yet, but I was sleeping roughly every three nights to avoid phantom spawns. I sleep through every night in my normal Minecraft worlds because I hate dealing with hostile mobs. I didn't want to do that for this series, but I also didn't want to be harassed by phantoms. So I settled on sleeping every three nights to make sure they don't spawn. Thing is, I had a hard time keeping track of when I slept last. I didn't record the full 10 hours in one go, I split it up across multiple days. So I'd be a day or two away from phantom spawning, quit recording, come back the next day, and forget how many nights I had until they'd swoop down from the skies to get me. And even if it was in the same recording session, it's just hard to keep track of that stuff in your head. So I forgot to sleep the previous night and now have a phantom on my hands. Being the brave warrior I am, I barricade myself underground until he burns alive. After the terrible foe dies by my hand, I get back to walking. Wait a minute, there's snow in the desert. I didn't... It just struck me as a... A weird thing. Look at all this. Is this supposed to happen? I don't see anything about a snowy desert on the wiki, so I don't know what could have caused this. I'm glad the game lets biomes have weird interactions like this. A snowy desert is a fun place to call home. After some, you guessed it, more walking, I returned to the prediction I made at the beginning of the video. In retrospect, 14 million felt like too high of a guess. But then again, I don't really have perspective for how far I can walk in one hour, let alone 10. So I brought it down a couple orders of magnitude to 700,000 blocks. That felt a little bit more right, even though it was still a completely baseless guess. Here's one of those wild villages I was alluding to towards the beginning of the video. This is what I expect from village generation these days. It's split up across wide gaps, Pathways generate underneath overhangs where houses are built, and it's just an overall mess. In the village, I find this baby villager and their parent. I heard a, I heard a baby one close. Oh. What? What are you doing in there? How do they get in there? Did you put them in there? Is that a crib? Or is that like a jail? Do you want out? I probably shouldn't take you out, you know, if you're... If your dad put you in there, I should probably leave you. But he's, he's looking at me. He really wants out. <sighs> look, about, look, buddy. I'm sorry. I can't just take you out. You, I'm not your parent. I'm sorry, buddy. Hopefully the little guy found his way out eventually. The village also has this floating red rose. I see stuff like this in a lot of villages. I feel like it's caused by the order in which features are generated in the world. Like maybe the grass is placed, 
village houses and decorations are placed, and then caves are cut out of the world, leaving the occasional flower without a grass block underneath? Just a theory. As I settle down to watch the sunset, I notice a bizarre stone obelisk in the distance. What causes this? I feel like my theory for the generation error of the floating flower is at least somewhat close to the truth, but I have no idea what would cause this floating chunk to generate. Is there some bit of the code that allows for floating islands in the first place? Like, do they intend for these things to generate? After seeing that, I'm walking through a taiga biome when... Quipa. Aw, man. Aw, oh, the foxes are scared. Why did I do this? I... They trusted me. My animals would follow me till the end of the Minecraft Earth, and this is the situation I put them in. Whiskers and Barkley went to the great village in the sky at 4 hours, 27 minutes, and 29 seconds. I reach a point of safety a couple minutes later and have some time to reflect while the sun rose. When daytime comes, I make my way to a nearby village. I place two fish in a chest and bury it, a memorial to my beloved cats. Look, I may have confused Whiskers and Morgana at the time, but I was grief-stricken. I couldn't think straight. Dogmeat, Shadow, Monroe, Whiskers and I say our goodbyes. We march onward. I find myself on a frozen river sometime later, and remember that I can speed down ice if I'm in a boat. Cue Eurobeat music. Oh my god, this is so much... I keep teleporting in front of me. I can't get going. Well, it was worth a shot. Just before Hour 4 closes out, I find some incredible landscapes. This little pillager outpost at the foot of a mountain is cute. And hiding from the earlier view is another massive mountain. I don't think I'll ever get tired of seeing things like this in Minecraft. And with that, we're halfway through our journey. Who knows what interesting sights we have yet to view. We don't have to wait long to see one of them though, because only 30 seconds into Hour 5, I find this expansive cave. This is absolutely my favorite part of modern Minecraft. I alluded to it earlier, but I usually gravitate to caves during my survival playthroughs. Maybe it's just my inner dwarf, but I prefer a home base in the indoor structures of caves rather than the exposed surface. 1.18 really did a lot to revitalize my interest in the game, and this cave is the fruit of Mo Yang's labor. This whole video exists because of that update. I wanted to get out into the world and explore the newer generation style. Despite wanting to see more of what the cave has to offer, I move on. Minecraft's got another weirdly generated village for us here. Imagine being one of the residents that live here, having to scale the sides of the pit to return to your home. The villagers here do it, whether they like it or not. It's at this point where the scale of Minecraft's world really sets in. I think about how I usually play the game. Most of the time, I stick pretty close to the world's origin and build networks of nether portals that take me directly to biomes of interest. But there is so much more space available. Like, an almost incomprehensible amount of space. The world stretches out 60 million blocks in the X and Z coordinates. Think about how much of that you'll see in a normal survival playthrough. Think about how much I'll see in this wild experiment. In these 10 hours, I'll only see a fraction of a fraction of what this world has in store. I'm just a blip in this game's world. Walking this far reminded me of stories I've heard from 2B2T. I've played less than 30 minutes or so on Minecraft's oldest anarchy server over the years, but I've seen enough videos to get a picture for what it's like on there. You walk so far out just so you won't be immediately griefed. Here's a map of 2B2T from 2021. It's both crazy how much has been and hasn't been explored. You could go to these coordinates right here to build a base and nobody would ever find it. Well, maybe not those exact coordinates, just pick your own. My point is, the scale of Minecraft is daunting. It's easy to feel like a grain of sand on one of Earth's biggest beaches. Existential dread aside, it's comforting to know that every Minecraft world generated has more than enough to satisfy anyone. A bit later, I stumble on this landscape and, wow, there's no tall mountains deep valleys, huge caves, or weird terrain bugs. It's just a plain old plains biome. It's almost striking in how normal it is. This area is quintessentially Minecraft. I run across a new environmental hazard not long after that. Powder snow. When you step on top of it, you sink downwards and start to freeze. 
It perfectly blends in with the normal snow blocks, so walking in biomes with it is like walking across a minefield. With powder snow in my mind, I had a thought. I could see them implementing this powder snow mechanic into the desert as quicksand. Actually, that'd just be annoying. Mo Yang, if you're watching, ignore that part. I go on a big rant about MMOs during this part, so we'll just skip around a bit. Some more walking. Uh, oh, we got another pretzel certified crazy cave here. Could this even be called a cave, though? It's part cave, part overhang, part surface? Whatever it is, it defies categorization. I almost wouldn't even want to build here and disturb its existing beauty. All right, back to the MMO talk. Blah, 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 nobody cares. I actually, it's very intriguing. Go watch the full 10 hour video to hear me ramble about all kinds of nonsense. Here's a mysterious patch of floating kelp. I'm gonna assume Herobrine was here before me and dropped all this, rather than a generation error in spawning the kelp, then breaking it. I spot another one of Minecraft's iconic floating dirt blocks with a plant on top. Can't get enough of those. Hour six arrives and my dogs start growling at nothing? As far as I know, the only thing they growl at is skeletons they're aggroed to, but I don't see any nearby. Maybe they feel an earthquake coming? A animals do that, right? I get some good, uneventful walking in for 15 minutes. It's nice to have some downtime. Then I see another spot. Oh my god, I come across a shipwreck. Find nothing of interest. Very cool. I do find a buried treasure map from a desert chest later, though. I open it and... what? Is this right? Isn't there supposed to be like a blank map with an X that leads to a chest? Why is it filled out? Hmm. Here's a little bit of the terrain where you can see through it if you look at a certain angle. I think that's cool. I think. In the middle of a coral reef while I'm doing my usual animal teleporting, I notice Whiskers is missing. It's really finicky to try to get them to teleport sometimes, but I can tell something's off here. I retrace my steps back to the shore I set off from, but she's nowhere to be seen. Remember my motto? Friends don't leave friends behind. We're going to find her. I just start walking east until I find her. A couple minutes go by and I still don't see her. Eventually I reach another body of water and boat across it. I'm gonna have to call at some point, I just can't keep walking backwards forever. I reach the shipwreck I came to earlier. If the animal's not here, yeah, I check this. And I could have swore I saw the cat. Whatever. I have no idea where she was. I looked in the footage of when I was in the boat before and I didn't see her anywhere. She must have been left on the shore from when I set off just before landing on the boat and teleported to me just then. Whatever, I can't complain, the whole gang's back together. I see my first wandering trader and successfully fight off the masculine urge to beat him to death. This is the first time I've actually seen a mangrove swamp before. I like the aesthetic, but man, walking in mud is the grossest sound ever. Props to the person who made it though, top tier icky sound. Okay, some more rambling, still rambling. I was watching the footage back here and I noticed this little guy. I definitely didn't see him in the moment, but I wish I would've. What's his life story? How did he get in this mushroom tree? And will he ever get out? Write your best fanfiction about him in the comments. Okay, you're still talking for a while. Ooh, Dripstone Cave. I've seen a handful of Dripstone Caves throughout my journey, and they've almost always been impressive. Looks like it'd be annoying to build a base in, but it's a neat aesthetic. The game randomly starts playing this song, and it totally catches me off guard. Don't think I've ever heard it before, but I like it. Walkin', walkin'. I try to do my speedy boat strat again, but you know how that goes. Hour 6 comes to a close as I try to remember my pet's names. Look, I could have cheated in some name tags so I could see their names, but that felt against the spirit of the video. I was gonna force myself to forget their names and mislabel them. I'm pretty sure I went the whole video thinking Morgana was the cat who survived the Great Creeper Explosion of Hour 4. We enter Hour 7 as I find this beautiful lake. I stop to enjoy it for a second. Another snowy mountain rears its ugly head, so I have to find a way around it to avoid becoming a future item of interest for archaeologists. I start digging my way through at some point, but I throw caution to the wind as I jump through to save time and reach safety. I made it through unscathed, this time. Here's a pretty darn cool cave. It's like an underground ravine that's open to the sky on both ends, but not in the middle. While I'm boating through the night, I see a bunch of zombies on a little piece of land. Zombie Island itself! Hold on a second. Is that... 
Ah. The next day, I am, yep, still walking. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's the pink sheep. The fabled pink sheep. Add pink sheep to my list of rare sightings in this world. In a nearby taiga biome, I come across its iconic cobblestone rocks. I don't know why, but these always stood out to me as weird. They were more weird back in the day when the only place you saw mossy cobblestone was in dungeons. Then they added a recipe where you can combine cobblestone with vines to get as many as you want. But back in the day, mossy cobblestone felt special. And it was weird to start seeing these little rock things in taiga biomes. A bit later, I'm boating when I come across some more large mountains. It feels like the new generation isn't afraid to dip into amplified territory and make some areas much higher than the surrounding landscape. If this is normal terrain in 1.18, I can't imagine playing in an amplified world. Oh, and here's a naturally generated circle. In Minecraft. Yeah. I discovered a gaggle of skeletons and accidentally started some infighting. So sorry guys. During some intense boating action, I find an ocean monument. And another. And another. And another- oh, no, sorry, that's it. Three ocean monuments next to each other. I'm in Guardian territory now. They let me sneak away without incident. Could a wolf win a fight against the donkey in real life? Prob probably. Call in now and submit your vote on who would win in a fight. Donkey or wolf? Hour 8. The light at the end of the tunnel becomes more bright. But we still have a ways to go. Hands down, I think this is the most impressive generation I've seen on my whole journey. This is the weirdest, biggest, most intimidating cave I've seen in this world. I don't spend too much time here because monsters don't want to see me succeed. I feel like I always see the cool stuff at nighttime and can't really stop to appreciate it. I give it a minute or so and resume marching west. In a jungle river, I find a squid who somehow got out of the water. Oh. Oh, come on, buddy. Let me help you. Oh. Whew. I had Mr. Squid to the list of casualties in this world. Sometime later, when I'm boating, I get hit with an arrow. Do you see who hit me? It can't have been these guys, right? They seem like they're too far away, even when I was back here. Maybe I discovered the first aquatic skeleton. Being the idiot that I am, I get attacked by phantoms. Yet again, I forgot to sleep within three days. I go underwater. It seems like this guy is stuck, so I quickly move on and leave him behind. Not a lot happens for the next 40 minutes, so here's a brief montage of me getting some steps in. song starts to play, and it's another I don't think I've heard of before. But man, this goes hard, doesn't it? I could imagine this being from an old JRPG. This is definitely one to listen for on your adventures. There's this crazy overhang a little bit after the song kicks in. I bet some nasty monsters spawn underneath that. Hour 9. The end is nigh. I spend some time healing up my wolves because I'm a bad owner if we get to do that sometimes. We reach a beach, and I do another roll call just to cement their names in my mind. Dog meat, shadow, whiskers. Where's Monroe? Oh my god, please tell me we didn't lose him. Friends, don't leave friends behind. We're going back to find him. This is the water I crossed, right? Where there was... There were three dogs there, right? There were three dogs when I was sitting over here. Did one of them die? I was right here when I fed him the raw flesh. I could have swore there were three dogs. It's only been like two minutes. There were definitely three dogs when you were here last. I didn't see him anywhere. I remember walking by a ravine between here and the beach, so maybe he fell in there? He just up and disappeared. I had no idea what happened to him. I didn't want to spend the last hour looking for him when he might have just been dead. Well, Monroe, you were 
You were a real one. You want to know what makes this even more tragic? What makes this situation go from sad to gut-wrenching? I went back to where I healed the dogs earlier. I specifically remembered healing three dogs when I was first there, but when I came back, Monroe was nowhere to be seen. Well, t turns out I, um, didn't return to the exact spot I did before. This is where I was on my first trip. Note the sand block and the tree right against the water. Here's where I was on my return trip a couple minutes later. A completely different spot. I didn't even... Oh my god. He's right there. He's right where I was before. There's the tree right next to the water in the single sand block. I walked back to where I thought he was, and completely missed him. Did you see him sitting there in the footage before I brought that up? I completely glossed over him like ten times. That hurts. I left him there. I noticed only a couple minutes later and went back, but I missed him. I only learned he was sitting there once I reviewed the footage afterward. I let him down. Even now, he's just sitting there, waiting for his owner to return. Thinking I lost Monroe, I built a memorial to him in this nice flower patch. Our group moves on, one pet lesser. I can see a village from Monroe's flower patch. It had been a while since I entered a village, so I decided to give this one the time of day. I notice almost all the villagers are congregating in one spot. The remaining chunk of my final hour is rather uneventful. What all goes on? Um, I walk a bunch. I almost jump to my death. Walk some more. I see an iceberg with a hole in it? That's the secret to cool Minecraft terrain. Generate something, then just cut a hole in it. Even more walking. We enter the final 10 minutes of the challenge. I think back to my prediction from the beginning. I said I was going to walk 14 million blocks at the start of the video. Later on, I realized that was obviously too much and changed it to 700,000. Rather than try and make another baseless prediction, I just lock in that guess. I also come up with a few other guesses. I predict that I've killed 100 monsters, later revising that to 70, and 3 creepers. I was trying to think of other things tracked by the stats screen that I could guess, like blocks fallen, but I couldn't come up with a good guess. With minutes left, I find a nice mushroom to stand on and get a good view of the landscape. I make a bed out of pink wool from the pink sheep I saw earlier. Dog meat, shadow, and whiskers are by my side as the timer ticks over. Ten hours spent walking in Minecraft. We've seen so many crazy things and experienced some wild events, but that's all in the past. Right now, I have one thing on my mind. And now that we're at 10 hours, do you know what that means? It is time to press the button. Are you nervous? I'm nervous. I don't want to do it. But I gotta do it. We're gonna see. This is the culmination of this whole journey up to this point. I'm gonna press F3 and we're gonna see what our coordinates are. Brace yourselves, because I'm... I'm not ready. Alright, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Okay, three, two, one, go. Wow. I'm sorry, is that a hundred thousand? Negative a hundred thousand? Oh my gosh. I was way off. <laughs> oh my god. A negative a hundred thousand. My first guess was fourteen million. 14 million. And then I said 700,000. But no, we're 100,000 blocks out. I walked 100,000 blocks away from spawn. I walked so far and saw so much, but there's still so much I didn't see. So many chunks generated, and so many chunks that will never be generated, never to be explored by anyone. I open up the stat screen. Animals bred too, yeah, that, makes, that makes sense. Bells rung one. I remember that. I remember being in the village. 45 chests open. Damage dealt 1,000. 600 damage taken. It's probably mostly from falling. 18,000 jumps. 133 mob kills. I, I, okay, I did correct it to say 70 at some point. I remember that now. Oh, it's interesting. I was, was kind of close with 100. Time since last death. 10 hours. Wow. 10 hours exactly. Wow, that's... I didn't know if it would be kind of off with the, uh... You know, me loading in and occasionally just, like, AFKing while 
chunks load in, but 10 hours exactly. Time with World Oak, okay, yeah, 10.88. 10 All right, mobs. Killed one cop. I've killed one creeper. Single creeper. Thought it would have been more. Not by much, but just a little bit more. And that's that. I walked for 10 hours in Minecraft, and that's what I saw. Are you forgetting something? Do you remember my motto? Friends don't leave friends behind. Thanks for watching. Check out my extended stay in Fallout 3's Megaton, or watch the full 10-hour version of this playthrough. Support me on Patreon to get your name listed on screen right here. See you next time.